Sometimes the position of one particle will depend on the position of other particles. And we can see that with this pulley system we see here. In this system, we have two masses. We have a mass A and we have a mass B. And they're connected, to get connected together through this cord. And if mass A moves down the ramp, mass B moves up the ramp. If mass A moves up the ramp, mass B moves down the ramp. When we're analyzing pulley systems, there's a couple of assumptions we make. The first assumption is that the pulley and the rope are massless. Another assumption we make is that the rope is inextensible. So the rope does not stretch as the system moves. Now when we're trying to solve the problem, the first thing we have to do is figure out a way to relate the motion of block A to the motion of block B. And we have a couple of different rules and set of procedures we can follow. And the first is we have to establish a reference datum from a fixed point. The second rule is to position the coordinates along the path of motion. And the third rule is the origins do not have to be the same for every coordinate. So let's look at this pulley problem right here. And using these rules, try to figure out, relate the motion of A to the motion of B. So if we establish a reference datum from a fixed point, we take the pulley right here. And this pulley is fixed on is fixed on this incline. So this is our fixed point. And the second rule is the coordinates we come up with have to be along the path of motion. And we know A is going to move in this direction and B is going to move in this direction. So when we set up our coordinates, the datum for A is going to look like this, and the datum from B is going to look like this. Now, the position of these coordinates are, we're going to call this our positive direction for A, and we're interested in this length of the rope because this is how far A is from the pulley, and for B, our positive direction is this way. And B is located at some distance uh, SB from the pulley. A is located at some distance SA from the pulley. We're not sure what these distances are right now. And uh, we want to find the length of all the cords that change position with respect to time. So how we do this is we start at one end of the rope and we just trace the rope back and we record all these lengths that we come up with as we trace this rope back. So if we trace the rope from here to right here, we, we know this is a length of SA. So we have SA and from from this point to this point, we have this length of a rope that is over the pulley. And we can actually ignore this point because regardless of where mass A and mass B is, the rope that is over this pulley is always going to be a constant length. But for right now, I'll call this C1 and we'll see what happens to it in just a minute. So we have this length of SA plus C1 and when we continue to trace the rope we go from this point to this point and this is a length of SB so the length of our rope is equal to SA plus C1 plus SB is equal to the total length of our rope now let's rearrange this equation a little bit and to rearrange it, let's move C1 to the other side of the equation. So we get SA plus SB is equal to the total length of the rope minus this, uh, this constant value over the pulley. And we're 
going to call this SA plus SB is equal to L sub T prime. And L sub T prime is going to be equal to LT, L sub T minus C1. We can do this because both this L sub T, the total length of the rope, and this constant C1, which is the rope over the pulley, are both constant, and they do not change with respect to time. So this L sub T prime is also a, a constant. And when we differentiate this with respect to time to get the velocities, we get the velocity of A plus the velocity of B is equal to zero. And we get zero because when we differentiate a constant, the, the answer is zero. So if we differentiate this again, we differentiate our velocity, we get acceleration. We get the acceleration of A plus the acceleration of B is equal to zero. If we decide to look at this equation in a little bit more detail, we get the velocity of A is equal to the negative velocity of B. And looking at our pulley system we have here, this makes sense. This says as A is positive, so as A is moving down the ramp this way, because this is our how we dimensioned our positive direction, so as A is moving this way, B is going to be moving in our negative direction, and B is moving up the ramp. And again, this makes sense because this, it's opposing our positive direction that we're referencing from. So this equation checks out. Now, what if we had a different type of pulley system? What if we had a pulley system like this? We have a mass of B that's connected through this rope, and it's connected to a mass of A. The mass B can move up or down, while the mass A can only move to the left or to the right. How do we go about this? Well, first, we have to establish the reference datum from a fixed point, and we can choose to go from this point right here. If you notice, I don't need to go from this surface up here because this uh, this cord right here and this cord right here and over this pulley are constant. So when I'm looking at this problem, I'm interested in where my mass B is from this from this uh, reference datum, and this is going to be a length of uh, SB. And I'm interested where A is from this reference datum. And again, we could pick this reference datum because A, uh, this pulley, is a fixed point right here. So A is some distance SA from this reference. And from this point to this point, we're going to call H. This is going to be H. So now we find the length of all the chords that change position with respect to time. So we start. Well, we'll we'll do the whole we'll do the whole chord. So we can, we'll start right here, and I'm going to call this C1. I'm going to call this chord length C2. I'm going to call this chord length C3. And I'm going to call this chord length C4. Now normally you don't need to take these into account because they're constant, uh, but because this is, might be your first time working with a system like this, I'll, I'll account for all the lengths of these chords. So if we start, we start right up here, and we go, we follow this rope, we get a C1 plus an SB plus 
plus C2 plus SB plus C3 plus H plus C4 this length of cord over this small pulley right here plus SA is equal to the total length of this rope. Now when we differentiate with respect to time to get our velocities the C1 is going to go away the C2 is going to go away the C3 is going to go away the C4 is going to go away and this H is also going to go away so this 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 and this are all going to turn into zeros and this H this H turns into a zero because this this rope this length of rope right here between this fixed point and this fixed point is never going to change regardless of how our system moves this length um, from right here to right here is always going to be a constant length so when we differentiate with respect to velocity we get the velocity of B uh, plus the velocity of B plus the velocity of A is equal to zero Pro I probably should have simplified this earlier but 2V B plus V A is equal to zero and if we differentiate this velocity with respect to time again we get to the acceleration of B plus the acceleration of A is equal to zero so looking at at this equation right here we have the velocity of A is equal to minus two velocity of B so as as A is moving in a positive direction and a moving in a positive direction is this way because this is how we dimensioned it this is our positive direction to the right B is moving to the negative direction so B is moving up in its opposing how we it's opposing this SB so B is moving up and it's opposing how we referenced our positive direction so again this this equation makes sense and if you think about this as you pull this mass to the right yeah B is going to move up so it makes sense if we had dimensioned this entire pulley system from a different point so let's say that we had the same two pulleys but instead of uh, dimensioning so instead of dimensioning everything from up here we dimensioned our entire uh, system from this point right here so we, we have we have that mass a we have a mass B hanging down and these are fixed points if we dimensioned a stays the same so this is SA and this is still a distance of H but we're going to measure the length of B from this point and this is our positive direction so this is S of B how does our equation change so if we look at our rope again and if this is C1 this is C2 this is C3 and this right here is C4 when we trace our our rope we get C1 plus this distance right here and this is a distance of H minus this distance of SB and plus C2 plus again H minus SB plus 
plus C3 plus H right here plus C4 uh, I think I'm out of room so plus S A is equal to a total length. Now we can simplify this up and we get C1 plus 3H minus 2SB plus C3 plus C4 plus SA is equal to LT. And when we differentiate with respect to time to get our velocities, this goes away, this goes away, this goes away, this goes away, and this goes away. And when I say go to away, goes away, I mean goes to zero. Minus 2VB plus VA is equal to zero. And solving for VA, we get VA is equal to 2VB. But wait a minute, this equation we got right here and this equation we got right here are different by a minus sign. Um, that's okay because we've referenced from a different point. We referenced the positive direction of s going up. So what this says is as a is positive and a is moving this way in a positive direction, b is also moving in a positive direction and b is m moving up because our positive direction is now moving upwards from B. So, so both of these equations are right and the equation you get is really dependent on how you decide to dimension your uh, datums and how you decide to come up with the lengths of the rope.